Take a minute to recognize a few folks here. Commissioner Carol, Commissioner Carol Ann Schwartz, thank you very much for coming and being a part of this. Uh, Prosecutor Angus Link, thank you very, very much. Um, Sheriff Tom Jones, and Mose Lake uh, Police Chief Dean Mitchell. And then, of course, we definitely want to honor Travis. Thank you so much, Travis, for being here. Um, Travis, Mr. Skidmore's son is here, and it's always a pleasure to see him. I tell him at least once a year for sure I'm going to see him, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to always see Travis and thank you very, this is an exceptional, exceptional turnout. What a great turnout. It's always fun and chaotic at the same time to have to bring out more chairs and another table. So that's always fun. But then people don't like to sit next to each other. I don't know why. I mean, I think we all showered or something. So we're good. Let me just tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, Carol's gonna come up, Carolyn's gonna come up here and sh introduce our speaker. Um, and we're gonna speak here for a few minutes and then after that I'm gonna come back up here and we will present some awards. I also wanna recognize the uh, Grant County Advisory Board that's here. So if you're part of the advisory board, go ahead and just stand up. Myself and Jeannie. And uh, so we're here, this is this is always our my joy. I love this. Thank you, everybody, for coming. This is a great turnout. We're going to honor some exceptional individuals today and agencies and events. Uh, I'd like to welcome our speaker. His name is Lee Lingard. He's from the Greater Spokane Substance Abuse Council. And he's just going to share with us some information about Eastern Washington and regional trends and uh, why prevention is so important uh, to us here in this room and uh, to Eastern Washington and our population as a whole. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Carolyn and Wendy for inviting me today to say a few words. I won't be too long. But I, I wear uh, several hats like a lot of us here. I work for the Washington State Meth Initiative, which is a federally funded program in Washington uh, to fight methamphetamine. Also work with Washington State Drug and Danger Children's Alliance. Some of you might have seen some of my training. Also, I work for Northwest High doing prevention on prescription drugs. But I'd like to share just a few stories. A lot of my duties require just driving around the state a lot, working with the different counties. And right here, we have a really good example of what we try to do or trying to promote. Getting out of our silos and talking to each other. We have people from law enforcement, prevention, prosecutors, treatment. That's what we're talking about when we go out and work with the counties, getting people to share and work with each other. My uh, background is in law enforcement. I'm retired at DEA special agent, and I never really knew a lot about prevention work until I got into this arena. And one thing I really recognize, and most of our law enforcement partners here will probably uh, agree with, we're not gonna jail our way out of these problems. We have to work together. And like we're doing today, recognizing people in the prevention work and talking to each other and networking. I've been working in the prevention area for about five years now, and it's a really exciting job. I like it because I get to work with the counties and see what's going on around Eastern Washington. And I learn a lot about what's going on, trends and problems and things we need to work on. A couple of things I'd just like to share for the last five years of working in Eastern Washington is that uh, things do change. Just like everything else, trends come and go. But what we're seeing now is uh, big issues with prescription drug abuse. Most of our counties on the west side of, the, of uh, or the east side of Washington State are dealing with prescription drugs and a heroin issue. I know in Spokane, where I work at, our first time heroin use is really going up due to prescription opiates. And I see some of our rural counties up north, the same thing. Black tar heroin is coming back. Can you hear me now? <coughs> Black tar heroin is coming back, and we're seeing a lot more issues dealing with opiates. Another indication of that, what I'm seeing is uh, with work with the drug endangered children issue is our prenatal drug exposure numbers coming up. Spokane used to be number two in the nation for meth babies being born. In the last year, two years, we were seeing a huge change to uh, prescription opiates. Sacred Heart Hospital in Spokane right now, at any given moment, six to eight babies are going through a job of prescription opiates mostly. So we're really seeing a quick change around and talking to two-year treatment people, you're seeing it here. It's alarming that we're seeing that kind of the abuse of opiates. Another issue we deal with in uh, Spokane area in Eastern Washington, a lot of returning veterans are coming back and Memorial Weekend's coming up. We're seeing a lot of them coming back dealing with uh, opiate issues. And we're seeing quite a few 
In fact, uh, next week we're doing an event in Spokane to work with returning veterans and their families to recognize the hardship that we're seeing from our veterans working on these issues and some of the issues of substance abuse too. Also have uh, the fortune to work with a lot of our local tribes here and they're experiencing also a huge increase in prescription drug abuse too. Uh, I was over at Spokane Tribe working about a month ago and they have three generations of some of their tribal members who are sitting around smoking Oxycontin. You got grandpa, grandma, their kids, and their grandkids actually uh, smoking Oxycontin. It's so bad that some of the elders in the tribe have to sew pockets in their pajamas to sleep with their pills at night because their kids are stealing. So it's a huge issue we're seeing across. I go around, I talk to a lot of different groups about substance abuse and drug use, even while, so well, it doesn't really affect me too much. You know, I, I, I go home at night, I live in a quiet neighborhood, and, and drugs and alcohol and those type of things don't really affect me. Well, 